I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons first. Thank you so much to my Biblio Spren, Biblio Howlers, and my Biblio Mansers. It means a lot to me that you give me your extra support for my passion and hobby. Hi everyone, uh, Patek here. Welcome to SFF Spotlight episode 56. Just like always, this is a series of videos where I will spotlight a uh, new notably release, a new cover reveals, new special edition, new Kickstarter campaign, and new book news in the adult science fiction and fantasy genre. And today we have about 15 topics to cover. I think if I had waited another week, I think, well, the number of news that I want to spot that will explode by probably 10 or more. And that's why I know it has only been a week, but I think it is time for another episode of SFF Spotlight. And today I will start by talking about uh, two new Kickstarter campaigns that I want to spotlight. The first one is for the limited edition enamel pin collection of The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wang. This one is being handled by White Crown, though I think most of you will know White Crown, also today's sponsor. I think many of you will know White Crown from uh, Raidmark Creative because this is the same group and White Crown is basically uh, a branch of Raidmark Creative in charge of producing enamel pin collection and limited edition of merchandise. And this Kickstarter campaign is ending in about a week from now. From the same team that was in charge in producing uh, an enamel pin of Choco Boy together with other booktubers enamel pin, now we have the official enamel pin for the Sword of Kaigen and this is for Kyogetsu, Siradenya and also Mamori Ken. This is Kyogetsu, so this is a Suba. Suba is a cross guard and this is a high quality enamel pin and Kyogetsu is pretty much a Takeru's uh, weapon. Once again, this is illustrated by Christina Hassan in collaboration and also uh, supervised by ML Wang. So yeah, this is an official design of Kyogetsu's uh, Suba. And this is for Siradenya. But this is not only Siradenya because here you can see Misaki's hairpin. And yeah, Siradenya's is Misaki's weapon. And yeah, this is the Subas uh, or the cross cut. This is the back. This is a prototype edition. And finally, here we have Mamori Ken. This is most likely my favorite of them all. I think this feels the most luxurious. This is a beautiful enamel pen and at the back here it is written also that this is a prototype. For Kyogetsu and Siradenya, you can just buy them individually but in order to get uh, Mamori Ken Suba and yeah, this is serialized enamel pin collection. You have to pledge for the entire set. So if you are a fan of the Sword of Kaigen and you want the official merchandise, well, this is your chance before the Kickstarter campaign is over. And I want to say thank you so much uh, to Raidmark for sponsoring today's video. To check out the Kickstarter campaign, make sure to check the link in the description down below. But speaking of Raidmark, the next Kickstarter campaign I want to spotlight, again, this is being uh, produced by Raidmark. But this one, this is for a book, one of my favorite books and series. This is for The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. Honestly, when I heard about this, this completely took me by surprise. And this limited edition, uh, deluxe edition, so there's a good chance the price of this one will be about 80 to 100 US dollars. The Kickstarter campaign of this deluxe limited edition will go live on the 4th of April. And yeah, the cover art is done by General Threat, and also this is designed by Sean Ticking. I definitely will look forward to this one. I'm a fan of Rage of Dragons. It has been uh, several years since the release of the sequel, The Fires of Vengeance. Hopefully this will be a boost to Evan Winter's uh, determination to finish The Lord of Demons, uh, the third book in the Burning series. But yeah, that's the two Kickstarter campaign that I want to spotlight today. And now, before we move on to talk about some special edition, the next one that I want to spotlight is about The Strength of the Few by James Eilington. This is not a really big news, but James Ellington has posted his progress regarding Strength of the View, which is the sequel to The Will of the Many, my favorite book of last year, my favorite fantasy book of last year together with Demon in White by Christopher Rocchio. But Demon in White is a sci-fi book. But anyway, yeah, Strength of the View is the sequel to The Will of the Many, and it is one of my most anticipated releases, not only of this year, but also of all time right now. I'm so looking forward to reading the Strength of the View and the update pretty much stated that there is a good chance that Strength of the View might be delayed uh, to the year 2025. But this is still a possibility because James Ellington is really close uh, to being done with Strength of the View, the second book in the hierarchy series. I don't know when this will be published, but if you want to know the details of the updates, I will leave the link to the details in the description down below. But whenever it's ready, you bet that I will be reading it uh, first day. Even before it's released, once I have the advanced reading copy, I will read it immediately and I will 
certainly do a second read of the will of the many. I've been inching uh, of doing that, but yeah, I, I will try to wait for the release date of the strength of the few first. And moving on to the next one, the next three news. They are John Gwynn's news. Yeah, this is a big John Gwynn's update and it makes me happy that an SFF Spotlight episode could feature a lot of John Gwynn news. And the first one is regarding the Fury of the Gods. Yes, it is here. The third book and the final book in the Bloodstone Saga. This is the cover art. The official cover art to the final book in the Bloodstone Saga is here and it is once again illustrated by Marcus Winnie. I think this is epic. This is Sanaka. I think if you have read Bloodstone Saga, you will know who Sanaka is. And well, just like the first two books in the Bloodstone Saga, you can see the insane scope of this cover art and also the assuming Ragnarok is going to happen in this book, which I believe it will, then I think the cover art has displayed the enormous potential that the book will be epic once again. I have mentioned it many times that when it comes to John Gwynn's books, I do believe that John Gwynn is at his best when it comes to the final book of the series, just like Wrath and also A Time of Courage. So I believe The Fury of the Gods will be the best of the trilogy, and I certainly will do a second read of the shadow of the gods and also the hunger of the gods very excited about this as predicted the release date for the fury of the gods is october 2024 so yeah about six months from now congratulations to john Gwynn really for managing to complete this one in the middle of his grief i think it is truly an impressive feat and it is not the end of john Gwynn's big news because the next two as i said is again john Gwynn's news the next one is regarding the limited edition of malice yes malice grim oak press edition is coming soon if you want to get a special edition of this one the limited special edition of malice the first book in the faithful and the fallen series by john Gwynn, well this one will go live the pre-order link will go live on the 10th of april so yeah really soon about a week from now i will try to release another sff spotlight episode on the 10th of april to remind you about this but this is not a cheap edition this is a fine press edition the price will be 195 us dollars and it will contain 11 interior illustrations by sam white and also again a cover art by marcus uh, weenie considering that the faithful and the fallen and also the entire banished land saga is one of my top favorite series of all time i will do my best to acquire a copy of malice grim oak press edition and speaking of banished land saga the last john green news that i want to spot at today this is regarding of blood and bone trilogy but this is for the broken binding edition so the broken binding has revealed three artworks from of blood and bone trilogy the broken binding edition of blood and bone trilogy is the sequel a, a sequel series to the faithful and the fallen and these artworks all of them are illustrated by rene eichner i think rene is an incredible artist and he has nailed the job wonderfully if you have read of blood and bone trilogy i think you will know what these scenes uh, portrayed just in case you haven't read the series i will refrain from mentioning the details of uh, these illustrations but i'm a fan of this interior illustrations i cannot wait uh, to get myself a copy of, of blood and bone trilogy the broken binding edition and because i'm talking about special edition now and also the broken binding i will feature three more special editions from the broken binding and all of them are exciting especially the next one because this is uh, the next cover reveal of Malazan Book of the Fallen, the Broken Binding Edition. And this is for the third book in the series. One of my top favorite books of all time, Memories of Vice. And honestly, even though I am in charge of directing uh, the cover art of uh, Gardens of the Moon, Death House Gates, and also Memories of Vice, honestly, this is my favorite cover art of the first three books. Ever since I signed to become an art director for this project, I knew immediately that I wanted this scene to become the cover art of Memories of Ice. This is Itkovian and the Tilanimas. I will not go into details regarding this scene just in case you haven't read this, but pretty much this is before the Tilanimas kneels before uh, Itkovian. But yeah, really love this scene and this artwork. I think Felix Ortiz uh, nailed the job. But Felix Ortiz, even though he hasn't read the book yet, I think he has managed to capture the brilliance of the scene uh, wonderfully. Really love what he depicted here. And out of the three cover arts in Malazan, Book of the Fallen so far, this one is the one that received the least changes and fixes. I think for the first two books, for the first two cover arts, I think both the Gardens of the Moon and also Death House Gates received about 10. 
there are about 10 rendition before it became the final cover art but for this one it received about four or five so yeah this is really according to my vision and i'm really happy with the result i hope many of you are happy with that as well we went into the cover out of the first three books with the mindset that this will become a set that's why it is similar in the art composition but i think there will be more changes moving forward i think there will be more changes to the fourth book fifth book sixth book and so on and i'm excited to see what will happen next i have some ideas but really this project has been a delight to work on and also quite nerve-wracking but i am really happy with the results so far i hope many of you are as well and also once again just as a reminder the naked hardcovers of the broken binding edition of malazan book of the fallen will features the french edition cover art by mark simonetti uh, i think without the text so yeah uh, with the exception of the first book, I'm trying, we are trying to not feature the same scene in the cover art. So if you, let's say you wanted a Karsa Orlong to appear in the cover art of House of Change, that will not happen because it already happened in the French cover art edition of House of Change with an artwork by Marc Simonetti. I and also I think the Broken Binding agreed, I think it's better to feature a scene or a character that hasn't been featured yet on the cover art. Again, with the exception of the first book because, well, it is the Siege of Pale. It has to be that. But yeah, uh, that's really the update regarding uh, Memories of Ice cover reveal. Memories of Ice, the Broken Binding edition cover reveal. But moving on to the next one, again, this is something, well, for me, it is super exciting even though I already own the OG edition. And this is the Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Liu, Midnight Edition. You can probably see this on my bookshelf behind me here. The Midnight Edition of the Dandelion Dynasty will be exactly the same as this edition, but it is in purple color scheme. And it will have more copies for sure, because this one is limited to about 300 I think and I don't think the midnight edition of the Dandelion Dynasty will be the same number I think it will be so much more so if you are a fan if you haven't read the Dandelion Dynasty yet what are you waiting for do it now and seriously you won't regret getting this edition because right now apparently this OG edition the broken binding edition is about 2000 US dollars or 2000 pounds on secondhand market so yeah it is so insane even though it doesn't contain any new interior illustrations acid free paper or smithsoon binding but the price is that much already so yeah finally the last book and binding edition i want to spot out today this is for a classic this is for the earth seed duology by octavia butler i have read only the first book parable of the sower and i really enjoyed that one but somehow i still haven't continued uh, to the second book yet the final book in the duology but this edition is looking beautiful. I will definitely get my hands on this one. And hopefully, after I have a copy of the Earthsea Duology, the Broken Binding Edition, hopefully I can finally read the second and the final book in the duology. But yeah, this is a harrowing, somehow also quite prophetic uh, reading experience. Parable of the Sower is a really great book, and I highly recommend this classic. And moving on to the final special edition that I'm going to spotlight in today's SFF Spotlight episode, this is regarding the sequel to The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie, Curious King Edition. Yes, this is for Before They Are Hanged, the second book in the First Law trilogy, and this time the illustration is being handled by Vance Kovacs. As far as specs and features goes, I think this will be similar to The Blade itself. It will feature an end paper, illustrated end paper, and also seven tipped in plates or seven tipped in fully colored interior illustrations all of them illustrated by vance kovacs and for those of you who missed out on the blade itself curious king edition there is still a chance to get your hands on before they are hanged curious king edition the general sale for before they are hanged by joe abercrombie curious king edition will take place on the 8th of april mark the date in your calendar if you want to get a copy of this one and acquiring a copy of before they are hanged will allow you to get the early access to last argument of kings the third book in the first law trilogy and also curious king has confirmed that they will be doing the entire first law world series yes so after the first law trilogy Curious King will also be producing a special limited edition of the Great Leveler's Trilogy or the Standalone Trilogy after the First Law and also the Age of Madness Trilogy. I cannot wait to see what they will do 
for every one of these books because right now as i said many times already the blade itself kirsing edition is the most beautiful special limited edition that i own at the moment it is absolutely stunning and once again it will be produced in letter press i honestly don't know how many stocks will remain on the general sale but i think it will sell out very very quickly so Make sure to mark your calendars once again if you want to get yourself a copy of Before They Are Hang Curious King Edition. So that's pretty much it for the section of Kickstarter campaign and also special edition and book news. And for the next one, this is about cover reveals. I have three or maybe four cover reveals to spotlight today. And the first one is for a new paperback edition of the Shanara, uh, the first trilogy by terry brooks the new cover art is done by eva eller i haven't read a shanara any books in the shanara series i haven't read any of them so if you have read them and you are a fan of the shanara series and you want to get the new paperback edition because i think this cover art is beautiful and if you want to get yourself a copy of this this will be available on september so yeah about six months or five months uh, from now and also if you have read Shannara series do let me know what you think about it do you think it is worth uh, your time or not and moving on to the next one this is for Soul Cage by Luke Schultz this is for an indie fantasy book cover to this one is illustrated by Dino is some of you might know him uh, from his work on 11 cycle by Kian Ardalan. This is a new book in a new series that is different from his previous work from the author's previous work which is A King's Radiance and yeah this is a different series. This is a series where murder breeds magic. Beyond that and the official premise I don't know too much about this one. I haven't read this myself but if you are a book reviewer and you want to get an advanced reading copy of A Soul Cage well, I will leave the link to the details in the description down below. It is possible to do that. And speaking of Nino is the next cover reveal I want to spotlight. This is for Way of the Wizards by Michael Michel. There will be a Kickstarter campaign for this one. And again, this is different from the author's previous work. This is not in the same series. Uh, the previous series and also the previous debut title, it was The Price of Power. The Price of Power has been recommended a lot to those who love uh, the First Law trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. And I think there's a good chance I will be reading The Price of Power uh, within this year, especially because some of his fans, uh, Michael Michel's fans of The Price of Power, are insanely diehard. And I really want to find out what's going on with this book, especially because I do love character-driven uh, grimdark fantasy as well. But The Way of Wizards will be a different series. And uh, I think the cover art is beautiful. It is illustrated again by Nino Is. I think this artist is really capable of illustrating uh, monsters and fantastical creatures. And this is a great example of that. If I'm not mistaken, the Kickstarter page will go live on the 4th of April. And finally, the last cover reveal I'm going to spot today. This will be for And the Sky Bled by S. Hati. Some of you might know uh, Zoran. Zoran is a bookstagrammer and also a book talker, a very popular book talker with more than 200,000, I think, followers now. Absolutely incredible. Zoran has been working as a part of Bindery Books and she's been working as a tastemaker. So basically, she is kind of in charge of choosing which book get published at Bindery Books and she chose uh, this book and the sky black and the cover art is illustrated by Kat O'Neill. I haven't read this one yet, but I think this is quite interesting what Bindery Book is doing. I don't know uh, too much details about Bindery Books. I just heard about this. And I just want to say congratulations to Zoran and also the author uh, for this collaboration. I hope the book will be great and I look forward to reading this someday. And now we move on to the final section of today's SFF Spotlight episode. Time to talk about two new noteworthy releases. The first one, of course, it will have to be Disquiet Gods by Christopher Rocchio. As you can see in my bookshelves behind me here, Disquiet Gods has arrived. And yeah, it is being published on the 2nd of April. So if you are watching this on the 2nd of April, it is officially out now. And I'm so looking forward to uh, reading this Quiet Gods within the month of April. So excited for this. I just need to finish the current book that I'm reading, which is The Witchwood Crown by Ted Williams. Once I'm done with that, I'll be reading this Quiet Gods. And I must say, I am truly honored and also blessed to have my name featured on the back cover of this Quiet Gods and also on the inside, on the acknowledgement portion together with my uh, fellow booktubers. I think 
it means a lot to me because this is one of my top favorite series of all time. It is currently at the number one spot for the best sci-fi series that I have read together with Red Rising Saga by Pierce Brown. So yeah, I look forward to reading the penultimate installment of this quiet guts. It is out now. And finally, the last news that I'm going to spot out today and also the last noteworthy release, this is for The Dark Feather by Anna Stevens. I have read only the first book in the trilogy, The Stone Knife, and I think that book is one of the most criminally underrated grimdark fantasy novel. And I haven't read uh, the sequel yet because I was waiting for the series to be completed. And now that the trilogy and the series is completed now, I think it is time for me to do a second read of The Stone Knife and now continue uh, to the end of the series. But yeah, uh, as I said, Stone Knife is criminally underrated if you love grim dark fantasy and you want to read an Aztec inspired world building fantasy novel, I think you really should try reading The Stone Knife and especially because the trilogy is completed now. You can just binge read the trilogy. Hopefully the second and the third book will be as good as The Stone Knife or maybe even better. And yeah, I think that's really it. That's the end of today's SFF Spotlight episode. I don't know about you, but for me, that's a lot of incredibly exciting news and also special limited editions. And of course, Fury of the Gods is one of the main highlights for me. I'm really looking forward to reading that one. But anyway, to wrap this SFF Spot Out episode up, well, do tell me what you think about the news that I spot out in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.